Hi, my name is Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. Last week, I created a free drum library for pianobook.co.uk called Cassette Drums. It's got this real tape-saturated sound to it, and I'm really excited to hear the demos that you're releasing. If you haven't already, do check out the page down below, and I've also got a walkthrough for that library, which I'll leave linked at the end of this video, so you can check that out if you like. I've had some lovely reviews on the site already, which I really encourage. I'd love to hear what you think about the libraries, whether the GUI needs tweaking, character building, and stuff like that. And I think ultimately, Pianobook as a website will get to a point where if there are certain updates to be able to roll out, I can just replace the contact file. That's what I'd like to be able to do anyway. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that at the moment. However, I had a really good review that was saying that they love the library, but that they want to create a multi-output version of contact so that they can process the different elements in their own way, and they were struggling to do that. Now, I can't even reply to people on the reviews. It's not really a forum for that. And I've tried to find this guy on Twitter, and I can't find him anywhere. So... If you're watching this and you left that comment, thanks for the comment, because it's inspired this video. And I'm going to show you today how to do that and maybe why you'd want to do that. So I'm going to be using Contact 5 to show you how to do this. It's exactly the same process for Contact 6. And I'm going to leave this instrument saved down below so you can check it out and use it for free if you like. So normally you'd end up clicking on stereo. What we're going to do is click on a multi-output and we're never going to need 25 stereo channels, but let's just do that anyway for now. So once this is opened up, we've basically got a few controls. And if you don't see this down at the bottom, you need to click up here and click outputs. So we've got some stereo outputs. We've got some surround outputs. I'm just going to start by creating, I think six channels should be enough. I'm going to start at stereo one and I'm checking the box here for ascending output assignment. And I'm going to delete existing channels before creating new ones. So this is kind of starting afresh. So here we go. These are our outputs, actually, the names of the outputs. I'd recommend that you do this before loading in the instrument uh, for the reason I'm about to show you. So I'm going to put kick here, and then snare, and then I'll do the toms as its own bus, hi-hats, and then I've got cymbals here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load in cassette drums. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that the thing we need to change is the instrument buses and also the channel routing. So let's go up to the top. And the first thing I'm going to do, luckily I've put this into separate groups anyway, so it actually takes to group busing quite well. Um, but I need to highlight all of my kicks and select edit flag for selected groups. So there we go. So that means that anything I change is affecting these groups only. Um, it's really annoying if you forget to do that and then you find out that you've done something annoying down the line. So I'm going to change this name to kick just so we, we know what we've got. And then I'm going to send this to the kick output. And in the same way, I'm going to output these to the kick as well. So let's do the same thing for snare. Scrolling down, output. Bus 2, which we're about to rename, snare, and then output, snare. So we're going to do this the whole way through, and it doesn't actually take very long, but um, when you've got kind of jaded and you've been working for a while, you can uh, sometimes make silly mistakes, and obviously on larger productions, it can really set you back by quite a lot of, quite a lot of time. Um, so here we go. Okay, so once we've done that, if we try and play the instrument, So you can see that everything is routing through the instrument in the correct way. Now, as you can see at the bottom here, we've got our outputs of contact. So this is outputs 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if we now open up the mixer, you'll see that above this instrument, we've got a little plus button. So if I now click this, uh, we don't actually need six outputs, we only need five. This is going to be the basis of our instrument. So I can now call this kick. Then snare, toms, hats, and cymbals. And now, So 
So that works perfectly for what we needed it to do right now. As you can see, it doesn't actually show all of the tracks. So what I would recommend doing is right clicking and then click create track, and then you've got everything there. Now, this isn't a perfect solution because track one, the kind of main instance of uh, contact here is still within the kick drum track. That's just something you have to kind of get used to. Um, but what we could do now is create a summing stack and we could call this drums or more specifically, we could call this cassette drums. This can make your system really, really powerful. For one thing, you can put different amounts of EQ and compression on each individual element before it goes out of the main bus. You could maybe, I don't know, make the kick and the snare really, really mono feeling, and then the cymbals much wider by using a stereo width plugin. You could maybe send the hats and the toms to delays or a gated reverb of their own so that they're not interfering with other elements. And then of course, having this on a track stack, we can then begin to put plugins on the whole mix. So we can use compression to make it feel a little bit more glued together or a bit of EQ to kind of put it all in the same shade. It's a really, really powerful tool. So with that said, I'm just going to export this now as a patch that you can then download. And the best way to do this is if you open up the instrument, the library view at the side, uh, at the bottom here, you'll see this save button. If we do that now, I'm gonna save this into my favorites. I'm gonna call it cassette drums. And now if I were to load up a brand new instrument for the first time, I can go over here to my user patches and I can click cassette drums and it's gonna load the multi output instance of contact. And there you can see we've got all of the routing that we set out before. Now, if I were to do this for myself, I'd probably put some of my favorite plugins into each of these things so that I don't have to touch it at all when I get things loaded up. I can just start writing straight away. So I hope you found that to be useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. Loads of exciting things coming soon, including a free library in time for the Christmas Advent calendar with Piano Book this year. So do stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.